Hi everyone, it's Steve the Nortel Guy. In this video I'm going to be installing a Norstar RAD. RAD stands for Remote Access Device. So what would you use a RAD for? Well, RADs can be used to be used for literally remote access. So a RAD would be added to your system and what would happen is there would be a connection between this box and one of the station ports and then uh, technicians could use a dial-up line to uh, connect to this and then with special software they could make programming changes, do backups, restorations and it, it, the theory was is that it would save the need to have to send somebody to come on site. However, today this is more likely going to be used for performing backups and restorations because a lot of these, especially these, these O by 32s and well particularly the O by 32 models and, and the, the earlier 8 by 24s, they're dropping their memories more often now because the batteries are getting old. So if you do a backup with one of these guys and you save it, then when it loses its memory and you replace the software cartridge and battery, you have a, you have a backup that you can restore. So like I said, you know, the one of the ways they used to connect was with a dial-up line, um, but you can also use a serial cable to connect to it locally, which is handy. Now the RAD also comes with a power supply, or at least the fast RADs do. The old RADs didn't. Um, I have an old RAD. I might install that on this, uh, on this 3x8 in another video. But let's do this video in two pieces. Let's, first, let's do the installation and the configuration and then what we'll do is I'll make another video about the software piece about how to connect to it and to do a backup and a restore okay so the first thing I'm going to do is I need to put in a jack somewhere in this area uh, and connect it to my um, station uh, wiring so the rad becomes one of the station uh, ports so I'm going to do that and we'll come back in a minute okay we're back I put in a one port jack right here. I just kind of snuck the wire back through here and then connected it to the last port on the on the main module of the O by 32. So it's on uh, theoretically it's on uh, port one uh, uh, 132. Anyway so um, so here's my jack and here's my rad over here and I mount it sideways. You know, that's just kind of a personal preference. Uh, some people like to mount them up and down like that. The reason I like to mount them sideways is because I want to be able to have easy access to the serial port. There's also a light here that kind of gives me some indication as to how it's behaving. And uh, then, of course, there's the port where you, you're going to plug the station port in. Um, there's a couple of uh, holes on the bottom here where you can do the screw mounting. Just take a piece of paper, lay it over there, and make your little uh, template. Put the screws in. And then get this guy mounted on there. And then now I'm going to run a uh, uh, RJ11 cord from here into the jack. I'm going to connect the power. And then I'm going to show you how to do some initial uh, programming. Okay, be right back. All right, I've got everything hooked up and I'm ready to dive in. Let's just recap the connections here. There's my rad with the black power cable right there. I've got my RJ11 cord going to the rad jack that I installed. Uh, there's a little LED on there that's red. It should blink periodically. If it's solid for, say, more than 15 or 20 seconds, that means something's not connected right. Just take that RJ11 out and plug it into the back of a phone. If it lights up, then you know you've got a good station connection. If it doesn't, you've probably got a wiring issue. Um, but, yeah, that, that little red LED should blink periodically. Okay, over to the phone. So if your RAD is brand new... If I can get this adjusted for you where there's no glare. Okay, if the RAD is brand new, then when you do feature nine, or basically if the RAD hasn't been used before, when you do feature nine, star, star, you'll get this screen right here where it says password. It says exit, change, next. So it's asking you to set a password. So if I hit change and I put in, say, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, I think it has to be at least, at least eight or nine digits. Um, and then say, okay, got to confirm the password. Okay, so I've got a password in there now, and I can go next, and I can set uh, some various things. I won't get into that right this second. The, the point I want to make here is I'm going to leave the programming now. And so now that I've set a password, when I do feature 9, star, star, it pops up with password. Okay, here's my point. If you just got this rad and you're installing it, and you're getting this password prompt right off the bat, that means it's already been set up once before. You don't know what the password is, most likely, so we need to do a factory reset. 
Okay, the way we do a factory reset is you have to go into your system programming, change the date on the 0 by 32 to, um, to April 15th, 1999. Okay, this is kind of a bizarre process, and I'll, I'll post the text in the description so you can read it again. But before we can even do the default programming, we have to set the date on this to April 15th, 1999. Once you've done that, then you got to follow this key sequence. And it, it's a little strange, but just stay with me here. So go feature, nine, star, star. Okay, it's asking for password. We don't know what it is, so we go uh, the left-hand soft key over here. Hit that five times. One, two, three, four, five. Then hit the center key six times. One, two, three, four, five, six. Then hit the right display key eight times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Then hit the hold key, and then you'll get this fast rad debugger. We want to hit the uh, the two, and then the one, and then it resets the rad. It'll say fast rad reset, and then you can hit release. Okay, so hit release and it goes back. Now you're free to go back and change the date. But here's my point. So when you go feature nine star star, instead of asking for the password, now it's it's showing you that you can change the password or hit next. So that's how you default the rad before you can use it. All right, now that we're in there, uh, obviously the first thing you want to do is change the password. And you'll need to do that because in order to connect with the software, it's going to expect there to be a password in there. I just use one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine as my password. All right, and then the other thing it's going to need is a system ID. So hit the next key. We're going to go to general system ID. Hit show. There's nothing in there. I hit change. What the Nortel technicians typically used to do was just use the phone number as the um, as the system ID. All right, so put in some kind of a 10-digit number there. And then for data, that describes the speed connection or the type of connection. Uh, I've got auto answer turned to off, which that's the way I like it. Um, you can have it set up to auto answer a line in particular. There's another way to get connected, and we'll cover that when we do the software piece on this. There's how long you want it to delay before it answers. Okay, baud rate. So you can have a baud rate of 96 is the default, which is fine. However, if you're doing a backup and a restore, you might find it's a little easier to change it to 19.2. Just speeds up the process a little bit. Anyway, I'm going to leave it back at 96. All right, so that is your RAD installed. Set the password, set the system ID, and then we will, in the next video, we'll show you how to use the um, the Norstar Remote Utilities software to uh, to talk to this with a PC. Okay, thanks for watching.